Why do lawyers seem to have it in for Freeman on the land? Is it because they've actually rumbled us? Uh, well, the short answer is no. So what I thought I'd like to do here is just, first of all, explain why a lot of lawyers do have problems with Freeman on the land, sovereign citizens, organised pseudo, legal, commercial argument types, whatever you want to call them. Um, also to address some of the points they raise, but also to say why we tend not to engage with them. You know, why they're saying, oh, well, you know, why what you argue with us? Um, and also just to just talk about some general legal trivia that you might find interesting. So first of all, you know, what's the, our problem with them? Um, well, there's nothing new about this. Showing my age here, I remember the old days of UK.legal. And there were lots of people on there running sort of similar, you know, similar types of arguments. Oh, you know, the law's wrong and this means this. And just seeing, interpreting the law how they thought it was rather than any basis in reality. And all the same stuff. It's all corrupt, um, you know. It's a dodgy system, it's all secret handshakes, etc, etc. So like I say, nothing new, but over time, I think with the internet, you've got this sort of like core body of similar themes that crop up everywhere, you know, about not contracting and all law is voluntary and all that sort of thing. Um, but what's our problem with them? You know, so what? Who cares? Um, you know, there is a whole field of, you know, legal study called jurisprudence, which examines these arguments as to, you know, why... Can the state tell you what to do? How is law enforced? What is law? How did Parliament get to be sovereign? Where do they derive their powers from? These are all completely legit points. And this is a problem, you see, because as lawyers, we are professional sort of, you know, debaters and arguers. And we do often, you know, we, we concede other people's points. You know, if somebody's got a good point, we'll concede it. And the danger with the Freeman on the Land stuff is they take a lot of stuff that you know, sounds plausible and underlying it, you know, th there are a few phrases and words they use and concepts that actually do have some truth to them. But then they put them out of context. But the trouble is, if we concede any of that and say, well, actually, no, there's a point there about, you know, how did the, the social contract come into being and how's it enforced? Ah, see, they're all agreeing with us. And it's very easy to say, well, actually, no, it's a bit more complex than that. Um, it's very easy to take things out of context, put a five second TikTok up, you know, um, we'll see what happens here. Um, but, but what's the problem? Well, first of all, as lawyers, we know just how precious court time and court resources are. You know, the systems are creaking at the edges, civil and criminal, both here and in other countries. It's a nightmare. Uh, and people need access to that. People with legitimate concerns need to get their cases heard quickly, you know. Um, and the problem is, your sort of um, organised legal commercial argument, the pseudo people, you know, optical people, whatever you want to call them, they disproportionately take up both court time and court office time. And it's, you know, you speak to any court clerk or anybody in the court office, and it's like 95% of their hassle is, you know, this sort of, these sorts of arguments. And often, a lot of this stuff is very difficult to deal with. Uh, I'm not saying every free person on the land, you know, isn't a lovely, polite person, but some of them aren't. And, you, you know, court staff get, you know, they have to deal with abuse. I mean, judges don't really care about it, it just you know, washes off. But, you know, court staff have to deal with this. You know, oh, you're all corrupt, you're all the system. I demand you do this if you don't serve this immediately. And just the hassle of sorting out this incomprehensible nonsense paperwork. Um, so, yeah, so courts have got very, you know, annoyed with this. Uh, but, you know, you sort of go, well, they're only hurting themselves. However, the big problem now is that this message is getting out and other people who might have genuine cases are buying into it and it's not ending well for them. Um, you know, I do a lot of you know, animal rights stuff. I hang around in vegan communities. And we get people, you know, people going, oh, you don't need chemotherapy, just eat kale. It's like, no, no. And we call them out because that's just terrible advice. Like, it's like, you know, <laughs> that's rubbish. You know, being vegan won't stop you getting cancer. Um, you know, hospital, proper medical treatment will. Um, so, you know, there is this thing, and it's the same thing for lawyers. We have to warn people because... It used to be that courts would go, oh, God, you know, it's another nightmare, but let's just look through this and see if you've actually got any underlying case. So they would try to help them despite themselves. And this is why sometimes go, oh, you see, we won, we won. It's like, well, no, you didn't actually. And the judge just went, actually, notwithstanding all your nonsense you've pleaded, you've actually got a case here that, you know, is arguable. So I'm just going to do it as if it was. But people are losing patience now. And I've given the examples... Um, recently of you know the lady losing her child and the people losing their homes completely unnecessarily and you know it's not the freeman on the land advisors who are around to pick up the pieces on this so that is one of the reasons 
that we just find, you know, this so distasteful. Because, you know, like I say, we, you know, a lot of people come into the law because they want to help people. You know, don't get me wrong, the law's interesting, the law can be well paid in some fields, but especially in things like family and criminal, people are doing it because they actually care about people. And to see, you know, like this unnecessary suffering, it winds people up. Um, so why don't we address people? You know, why don't we engage with them? It's in the same way that we just, it gives credibility to even suggest that this is debatable. It's like, you know, generally speaking, if you're planning space, space fright, you, you don't invite flat earthers to your conferences. And it's the same thing. It's pointless even engaging because it lends credibility and lending credibility is dangerous. And there's always a risk of stuff being taken sort of out of context. Um, so yeah, it might seem unfair that we talk about them, you know, without giving them a right of reply. But I think it's very important to warn people. And look, use some critical thinking. I, you know, you, we are not infallible, but we'd like to point that out. Um, and all I can do is I can say, this is, you know, how I interpret the law, here's the law, legal system, you know, this is how we understand it. But the fact is that, as I said, there are lots of legit criticism about the legal system, but we operate within the legal system that, we, you know, we've been dealt because, you know, that's what we have to do. And we do the best for our clients within that. But let's address some of their points. Um, barristers swear an oath to some nebulous corporation. Barristers, barristers don't swear oaths at all. Um, we get called to the bar, you pass your exams, you eat all your dinners or qualifying sessions of the call now, and they go, congratulations, here's your bit of paper saying you're a barrister. That's it. I mean, I signed a book. I don't think everybody in signs a book, and we'll come on to what ins are in a minute. But, you know, it's just like, here's a big book and here's a table made out of the hatch cover of Sir Francis Drake's ship. Ooh, very cool. Sign that. That was it. Um, and get some photographs of mum and dad and then go and get hammered. That, 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 that is, you know, that's as far as it went. Um, barristers basically are in league with the judge ahead of their client. Um, again, there is a bit of a point there. You see, a barrister's first duty is to the court. Our second duty is to the client. And we have to represent, you know, any client that comes our way fearlessly and to the best of our ability, regardless of what we think of them or their cause or any personal consequences to us or our reputation or even our physical safety. Um, but we have to represent them within the rules and the law. Uh, we can't mislead the court. We can't lie to the court. We can't run knowingly terrible arguments. We can run weak arguments. We can run the most rubbish case in the world as so long as it's, you know, legally there's a factual legal basis for it. But what we can't do is just make up law and just run silly points. We can't try to manipulate the court system uh, by bringing frivolous claims or anything like that for sort of tactical reasons. Um, so that's it. So when they say we are, you know, we're in league with the judge, yeah, actually, it's not the judge, it's the court. But yeah, our first duty is to the court. Um, so, you know, there's a point there. Um, we somehow are beholden to the Law Society and it's some weird organisation. Well, barristers don't have anything to do with the Law Society. The Law Society is the organisation that represents solicitors. Our thing is the Bar Council. What does the Bar Council do? Um, I suppose really it's our trade union. I mean, it used to also be our regulator, uh, but people said, well, it's not really right that your trade union <laughs> sticking up for you is also your regulator disciplining you. So now the Bar Standards Board is a separate independent entity to deal with that. So now what does the Bar Council do? Um, like I say, it fights our corner, it rows with the government about, you know, the court service and public funding for the legal system. Uh, it runs courses, you know, it tries to sort of keep things, you know, relevant for the Bar. Um, you get discounts. I get like 10% off dry cleaning because they send you a little card. Um, and I get a magazine, although I have to pay extra for that. So, yeah, that's pretty much the role of the Bar Council. Um, what about, oh, you know, and it's all this weird mystical temple stuff. Okay, um, what is the temple? Um, the temple's actually a location in London, a geographical location that used to be the home of the Knights Templar. But when the Knights Templar fell out of favour and basically, you know, were all massacred... Um, and, and, you know, the ones who didn't, like, escape into exile or run away. All of a sudden, this really this empty property became available. And being lawyers, I went, ooh, that's, they're quite nice buildings. And, you know, we get some cheap rents now, basically, bearing in mind that the old landlords have all been murdered. So we moved in there. And we took it over, and that's where the lawyers started hanging. That's why they started hanging around in that part of London. Um, over time, the Inns of Court were formed. as uh, Gray's Inn, Lincoln's Inn, Inner Temple, and Middle Temple. Um, Middle Temple and Inner Temple just took their names from the fact that they're in the physical location of the temple 
and one's a bit nearer the middle than the other. Um, and Gray's in and Lincoln's in. I don't know, you'd have to ask them where they got the names from. Um, but so what are Inns of Court? Um, they started out in the same way that like guilds and livery companies did. Um, they taught a skill set to people, you know, the law, in the same way that the Silversmiths Guild, basically you went there if you wanted to be a good silversmith and they teach you everything and, they, you know, there'd be a bit of selection. Um, that's interesting. Just to do some art law, the definition of masterpiece is the work of art you show or the thing you show to be admitted to a guild. So it's like, here's a really bit of stonemasonry I've done. Here's a really nice bit of silversmithing I've done. Here's a really nice bit of crochet. And that, that was it. That was your one, that was your admission. This is my masterpiece and things. I mean, I know now we just use it for anything generally to say, oh, this is like really good. But that that, that is the technical meaning. Uh, so a bit of trivia, art trivia for you there. But yeah, so... In the same way that the guilds would, you know, admit people and they were the only people allowed to, like, indenture you or charter you, it was the same thing with the Inns of Court. They would train you up to be a barrister and they were the only people allowed to call you to the bar. I mean, there were lots of other different types of lawyers at the time. In the, lots of, you know, in the same way, there were lots of silversmiths who weren't in the silversmiths guild. But, you know, over time, that is how the Inns have done it. So... The one thing with the inns now is we try to keep them relevant, that they're not just livery companies and we just dress up once a year for the Lord Mayor's Parade. So, you know, that's why we do so much teaching. We do outreach programmes to try and encourage people. Um, we promote sort of ideas, you know, changes in the law. There are lots of committees. There are lots of specialist interest groups, um, you know. And the idea is that it is to assist in creating excellence in the law and, you know, assisting our clients. So, you know, it, that, that's the whole point. It's to stay relevant. But that's about as far as it goes. So, yeah, so there you go. I mean, like I say, that, you know, and you don't just have to take my word for this. I mean, you know, check everything I do. You know, do some critical thinking. You know, sort of go, does that sound plausible? Is that consistent with other things? Can I go away and check this? You know, and if you've got any questions, you know, feel free to ask them. But I think the ultimate test is this. Can anybody produce any proof that any of these arguments have worked? And by that I mean, here's a judgment saying, I accept you know, that something about birth certificates or something about, you know, because you get all these weird things like, oh, lawful and legal and, you know, they're different things. No, they're not. It's like couch settees and sofas. It's just the fact that English is met, you know, we nick lots of words from other languages and legal is from the Norman French and lawful is from the Norse and they're completely interchangeable. Um, you know, birth certificate and, you know, sort of ship's birth are different etymologies, maritime law, well, yeah, there is a thing called maritime law. In the same way, there's a thing called, you know, defamation law. And it has its own specialist judges who tend to occupy, you know, particular courts. So in the same way that just about every defamation trial ends up in court 72 at the um, RCJ, every admiralty shipping law case ends up in the Rolls building. Because, you know, they're the people who know what flotsam and jetsam is and what's a wreck and what's a derelict and stuff. But, you know, it's just that that's an area of law and it doesn't apply to any other area of law. I can't sort of pitch up in the criminal courts and start rambling on about defamation um, in the same way that, you know, you can't start just pitching up in your council tax port, court and start talking about bills of lading. It's just, like, not applicable. But there's nothing sinister about it. But, yeah, like I say, if, you, if anybody can produce a judgment saying, yep, we won, and, you know, and this, you know, you won, and these are the grounds on which you won, we accept all that, well, great. I'm more than happy to be proven wrong but uh, I don't think I will be. Right, and once again, if you did like that, please consider subscribing, and also maybe, actually, no, if you liked it, well, yeah, if you liked it enough, you could subscribe, but if you only liked it a bit, just give it a like, and then, you know, I'll try to do something extra for you to subscribe, but uh, keep chatting to me in the comments, because um, this is, again, this is all from the comments. <laughs>